Welcome to the Youth Knowledge Break, organized by the partnership between the European Commission and the Council of Europe in the field of youth. A series of online conversations about the role of evidence, research and knowledge in the youth field in Europe today. Uh, so welcome to the Youth Knowledge Break series. Uh, this is the part of Youth Knowledge Forum hosted by the partnership between the European Commission and the Council of Europe in the field of youth. As a part of the Youth Knowledge Breaks, we will be bringing together policymakers, researchers, practitioners and young people to discuss what is the role of research and knowledge in the youth field. Uh, this is the first of our series uh, and uh, today uh, we will be starting with a panel discussion which will be hosted by Marius. Uh, but first a few technical details. Uh, so as you know, as we have all become very experienced with using Zoom and technology these past uh, few months, uh, all the viewers are uh, automatically muted. Uh, you can use the chat function for comments. You can also use the Q&A function of the Zoom and you can use the raise hands. Uh, function as well and uh, we will then also be unmuting some of the participants later on. Uh, this uh, webinar uh, is recorded and the recording will be made available later on via our Facebook and uh, YouTube channels. Uh, for this session we also have a graphic recording uh, with us and we will also be showing it uh, later on uh, throughout uh, the webinar. Um, so that is all for me and I give the floor to Marta to introduce the Youth Knowledge Forum and uh, the, the background uh, of this project. Good morning everybody, it is a great pleasure to welcome you, uh, unless, uh, uh, unfortunately not live, but uh, live in virtual space. Actually today was the day when we uh, meant to meet a lot of us uh, in Budapest. As we know very well, it is not possible for many people still to move around. So we thought at least of starting the series of online events uh, with this webinar. What the Youth Knowledge Forum was meant to be from the start uh, is at the core of the work of the Youth Partnership. Namely, it is about cooperation between research, policy and practice and knowledge uh, being used and supporting the development of youth work practice and of youth policy. We have been busy with this topic for, for many years now and this event uh, and the series of events that it turned out to be uh, intend to bring the experience, knowledge, questions and possibility to debate them all together. How can researchers be involved in processes linked to youth work and policy development, how um, the knowledge that is produced can best support also young people, how can uh, the policymakers make sense of it, what formats would be the most relevant for, for them, how to cooperate for as ultimate goal, bettering of the situation of young people in Europe. That is the core of it. So we intended to uh, look at the youth research in Europe. What is the situation of it right now? Who are the actors that are the most relevant for uh, developing youth research? How does this cooperation between research policy and practice and young people themselves and youth organizations have looked like uh, until now? What things maybe we can share from each other as peer learning? Uh, what what worked, what, what didn't. And also see what kind of sources of data, knowledge and youth exist and, and share them um, in a clear, accessible manner. How to translate the findings of research so that they are usable. And really making contacts, encouraging this cooperation and this conversation across uh, Europe within the youth field and possibly also beyond. We still hope to have the physical meeting in the second half of the year uh, where also the informal contacts could take place, where people could uh, chat over coffee on these issues. But at least for now, we can start in this online space. 
and that's what we are doing with this with this webinar there will not only be webinars but also uh, launching moments of different knowledge related youth knowledge related products that we that we have so that it is um, useful and known by a lot of stakeholders in the field and we hope that this series will bring you some food for thought, maybe some ideas and inspirations, and us all together a better understanding of the role and state of research uh, in Europe nowadays and what it needs to be also for the time to come. Everybody is now asking the question of uh, the new normality, new reality. Uh, maybe this question also of the role of knowledge in leading us through also crisis situations uh, will be useful. So I wish you a wonderful series and I take this moment to also maybe add a very brief personal note as um, I will be leaving personally the youth partnership and leaving the project and the series in the able but certainly busy hands of my colleagues, Lana and Tanya in particular with the support of Marius. I wish you great um, experience with it and real involvement please ask all the questions you have never dared to ask or put forward proposals that you might have been thinking of for a while and that will be born during uh, the time of these reflections and i am looking forward to strengthening the role of uh, youth research youth knowledge in the co and the cooperation itself between research policy and practice thank you very much for joining and uh, have a good webinar now Thank you, Lana. Thank you, Marta, for introduction. And already seeing some uh, some messages on the chat. So yes, please please use uh, chat to react and to send messages to each other. And I'm also excited to to start this meeting today because it's the first meeting of the series. And I'm thrilled that we already have 22 attendees, and we hope uh, to grow our to our core group of people who are interested uh, in research and youth knowledge uh, situation. And today our main aim is to map out a little bit the situation related to youth knowledge to see what's working, what are the challenges. We have four panelists today and uh, very soon I'll give them the floor to, to present themselves and their link to youth knowledge. But before, it would be really nice to understand a little bit who are the people who are connected, who are with us today, who are participants. So I would like to use uh, a slider uh, with you. So please either take your smart devices or just open the, another uh, browser window and type slido.com uh, because we want to see who is with us today and we will map us a little bit so then our examples could be more catered to your needs and to your situations can you see the screen the blue one the slide on if yes, yes uh, so either you scan uh, the qr code and it uh, goes directly it brings you directly to to the event or in the web browser enter the code 9562 this numbers has no specific meaning whatsoever don't look for it so if you are connected, I kindly ask you to answer the question, how do you feel today? And the scale is from one to 10, where 10 is very good, one <clears throat> miserable. Yeah, we already have 10 people answered. So also it's in a way sneaky way to check your digital uh, capacity and also it will give us nice charts uh, which is good for for to communicating the research to, to others so already 15 people replied 16 i think we can give it 10 more seconds it's nice to see that most of the people feel well with some very well some on average but no one below average Thanks a lot. I will move now to the second question immediately. Uh, already in the introduction, we mentioned you know, this triangle of, of youth sector, of youth policy, 
please take a second to think which angle of a triangle do you represent? And it's decision maker, researcher, practitioner, or it can be more than one or none, which is also okay. Yeah, I also have to answer from my side. The yeah, panelists, you can also answer the questions. Because the answers in either way, they are not very representative and we will not use them broadly, but it's more really to map out uh, our audience today. Okay, I think we can move to yet another question. I see that most of the people are juggling between couple of angles we have quite many decision makers and it's really nice to have you on board and also 23 percent of people identify themselves as uh, researchers all right let's move on and another question which i framed in a specific way from which country are you connecting today sometimes the question yeah i'm estonian but i'm living in brussels so how shall i choose so choose the country where you are stuck now and from which you are connecting now and it will generate the world cloud the bigger the cloud more answers are coming from that country yes some countries we see are overrepresented in this uh, cloud and we also hope that uh, uh, with the series, we'll manage to to reach out to, to more countries. I got a little bit disconnected. Good. Good to see a lot of uh, Serbians and Maltese here. Also, greetings to, to Norway, Lithuania, Georgia, UK, Ukraine, and all other countries connected. I move to the last slide before we go into presentations. And this is really serious for us uh, this, we really want your input what do you expect from the series of youth knowledge breaks so it's not only about this one but to the series of events what kind of questions you would like to see raised what kind of topics you would like to see raised what questions you want to get answered so please think and write it down for us Already some people are looking more for inspiration. So take your time and write your expectation for us. Some people are very practical. We need motivation for their thesis. Because quite often the research field is really linked to your educational sector. Some people are looking for updates on research and policy, opportunities to connect research and practice. You know, also concrete examples how people are using the knowledge, how it's used for policy making, how it can also improve the practice. Okay, I'll just give you a minute or two to finish uh, the sentence. Okay, I think for organizing team, it will be quite important to, to know down those answers. Uh, we will also share share them with you. And actually, you can also use uh, the same platform, Slido, 
to ask us the questions, which I could also pass on to our panelists uh, during the discussion. While you are answering, we also would like to inform that we will try to keep it uh, to one hour duration, unless it really could spill out into another 10, 15 minutes, but we'll try to keep it in the frame of one hour. So actually I realized that I have one more question for you and that's quite important. What are the main challenges related to your knowledge and research in your work context? Is it lack of inspiration because you related to that in the previous questions? Or maybe you can name some other challenges which you face. Is it underfunding? Is it not recognition, not being recognized and so on? So please also give us a bit of input on what are the main challenges related to youth knowledge in your work context. And I think our panelists can also relate to some of uh, the challenges you are mentioning about the funding, about the quality, about institutional support or lack of it, uh, about lack of connection between research and policy and practice. Also the question, never ending question of the quality. What is the quality in their research, research field? Okay, we already have 10 answers from you. I will wait for five more and we can continue to discussion with panelists. And uh, just to uh, jump in a little bit, mm -hmm. Marius, really reading please, the please. answers and especially the ones on the expectations. Uh, I think it is uh, quite clear that also our ideas uh, for the Knowledge Forum and the needs uh, to have these discussions between the three sectors are quite mm -hmm. uh, uh, well pronounced uh, through the answers uh, that we have from the participants today. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lana, for, for your... Uh, comment just yeah the the need of uh, research and knowledge comes from all parts of the triangle and then we cannot say that one angle needs more than other and today in our panel we'll have representatives of all sides so and also in our audience as well so that's that's pretty good uh, starting point okay thank you for all your input and all your comments I remind you again that you can use the, the slide app uh, to ask us uh, questions, ask panelists questions, which I will uh, pass to them in the discussion. And now let's go to the panelists. I hope you don't see my screen anymore. Uh, we have four panelists today. Uh, and I kindly ask you to present yourself. You know, what's your name? What's your role or title? and how you are linked to youth research, from which angle you are coming. First, I can invite Miriam to speak up. Good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to be with you this morning. Uh, well, I'm Miriam, uh, I'm Toma. I come from Amalta, and I'm, I'm the director of the um, Maltese Youth Agency. I also happen to be the vice chair of the um, Council of European Steering Committee. And uh, what is my relation to research? I mean, uh, as I was saying, I'm the director of the agency, so I'm a, a decision maker. I have to come up with programs. I have to come up uh, um, with I I implement delivery of services and implementation, and also monitor youth policy ar ar around the island. So in reality, my relation to research is mainly at the moment is commissioning research, trying to find out who the young people are, trying to find out what's happening up out there and to be able to become inspired and to be able to become more knowledgeable on what best um, what what best programs we can come up with for young to support young people. 
Thank you, Miriam. I would like to hear from Yelena Stojanovic. Who are you? What are you doing? What's your link to youth research and youth knowledge? Hello to everyone from Serbia. My name is Yelena Stojanovic and I'm executive director of National Association of Youth Workers from Serbia. And regarding the, the role, uh, yeah, it's mainly as I'm presenting uh, youth work practitioners, so mainly uh, seeing this subject through those lenses, but also for us, research is quite important for policy level, as we are trying also to influence uh, different policies regarding youth in Serbia. So yeah, double role. Thank you, as, as many of us. <laughs> uh, Marko, Marko Kovacic is from Croatia, please. Yes, I am. Good morning to you all from sunny Zagreb. So I'm the third actually angle of this triangle. So I work as a researcher at the Institute of Social Research where I'm, uh, you know, focused on youth studies, particularly youth policy and political youth sociology. I also am an adjunct, adjunct lecturer at University of Rijeka where I teach youth studies courses. And above all, uh, I'm a proud member of EKIP. Uh, for quite some time now, so basically my title to youth research is that I'm doing it. Thank you. And last but not least, we also have Benjamin. Benjamin, please present yourself. Yeah, good morning. Uh, my name is Benjamin. I'm a board member of the European Youth Forum. Um, the European Youth Forum, for those who are not too familiar with this whole structure, is sort of the uh, umbrella organization of youth organizations in Europe. So we are representing um, the voices of millions of young people gathered in different youth organizations. We have more than 100 member organizations that are uh, in two main pillars, national youth councils and INGYOs, so international non-governmental youth organizations, part of the European Youth Forum. And together we are advocating for the rights of young people in Europe. So obviously youth research is a, is a key element of that, how we are shaping our own internal policies towards advocacy and um, how we are also gaining knowledge about what the needs of young people is, what the struggle for the rights of young people uh, actually is. And um, so we are both consumers of um, youth knowledge and youth research, but we are to some extent also developing youth research internally. So thank you. Thanks a lot, Benjamin. So as you see, we have representatives three from all sides and some of them sitting on a couple of angles of, of triangles. So I think it's really, it uh, gives us a good opportunity to reflect a bit on the situation of youth research and knowledge. And the first question would be, and I think, you know, whoever is ready uh, can start answering, in what is the status of youth knowledge and youth research in Europe at the moment? You know, what's your take on it? Is youth research which is produced, you know, is it in institutions or commissioned on national or European level? Does it really support youth policy, youth work development? What do you think? I, I think in reality, uh, any, any research can support uh, policy development uh, and can support inst an institute, whatever the, what, whatever the research is. Uh, I mean, because it depends on on whoever then is developing policy to to really try and read what this research is telling us and use it for um, the per for for the purposes that are needed. So so in reality, we can't really say um, that whatever there is out there is not supporting us. Uh, I mean, whatever there is out there can support you. It depends on how you make use of it. I mean, but if you ask me what's uh, sort of whether there is enough research, uh, I don't think there is ever enough research. I mean, we have to continue mm -hmm. researching, research, things are changing all the time, and we have to continue. Uh, research is, should be continuous. So no, I don't think we can ever say we are saturated with research. Uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, because uh, um, the research fields can never be saturated. There's so much to, to look into, there's so much to dig into, there's so much um, to, to find out. And the more evidence you have, the more, um, in a way, inspires you to come up with new things, to come up with new policy actions, to come up uh, um, with different actions which 
will it then support young people? I mean, the needs of society and young people. I mean, I would not say especially, but uh, the needs of society and young people are so huge that I don't think we will ever stop researching to find out what's <laughs> new out there. Keep digging, right? Keep digging. <laughs> Keep digging and digging and digging. <laughs> Thank you, Miriam. So you said, yeah, research is needed, data is needed, proposals are needed. Marco, from the researcher side, how do you well, feel? Yeah, I would say that right now we're in a quite peculiar situation. On the one hand, I of course agree with Miriam that there's not enough research, especially there's not enough fundamental research that you know gives us uh, like a true sociological, political, science, cultural, you know, insight on young people. If we're focusing, of course, on the research on young people, and given the fact that this is a you not forum, I suppose we are. So I would say that there is a very lack of fundamental research. You know, there is a prevalence of applicable research that is in focus of policy. There are lots of civil society organizations that are doing that. There are some academic institutions that are also trying to conduct, you know, some kind of applicable um, research. However, what from my point of view, I know without, without you know, fundamental insights on the lives, behaviors, no, norms and values of young people, we cannot create actually, uh, we cannot create quality uh, policies, but we cannot understand actually the young people as a, a specific category. So this is the one prob problem. On the other hand, we have the second apori, and this is that uh, we've never been in a better place or in better time regarding funda funding of the European Union. So we have like the plethora of area of sources, Erasmus Plus, we have Horizons, we have some other, you know, private foundations that, that, that are investing money into research. Uh, however, there is a one question, and this is a, this is the other side of the coin, and this is actually uh, the accessibility of these funds. Most of these funds go to the organizations that are quite established, that are very good universities or very, you know, um, prestigious institutes across Europe. So basically the question is, and then we have the discrepancy between various reaches with research focused on the Western Europe mostly, and there are very few, you know, research data on Eastern Europe or, you know, the peripheral, semi-peripheral countries. So I think that this is something that definitely should be emphasized. And the last thing that I wanted perhaps to say is that, and your question was uh, whether this research is being used. I would say that there are lots of institutions, as I said, that are doing this kind of research. However, I'm not sure that the institutions who are supposed to be using this research are using it to the to the amount or to the extent that they're supposed to. Because, you know, there are, there are res we researchers produce data, we write policy papers, we write various, various uh, I don't know, articles, but then decision makers whether they read it or they don't read it, but I don't see in youth policy, despite the fact that it's declaratory that it should be evidence-based, that it's being used. Let me give you just one example and I'm going to stop there. For instance, structured dialogue. I mean, the whole idea of the structured dialogue now, EU dialogue, was that, I mean, there are lots of, there is an abundance of data that doesn't work at the European level. I mean, it, perhaps it works at a local level, but it doesn't work at the European level. However, with the new European youth strategy, it didn't change anything. Nothing from the research insight was implemented into this new process or the old process. So I would say, yes, there are, research, there are lots of research uh, endowers. However, they're not being used as they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marco, for your reflection. So having research doesn't necessarily mean, mean that it's actually used or uh, applied directly. I would like to ask Benjamin to think a little bit, uh, but because I will ask first uh, Yelena, uh, not really about the youth research aspect, but about youth knowledge, because we're talking about both elements, you know, you know, research as a process, but also knowledge as some kind of maybe result. Do you think institutions know young people nowadays? Do you think they use enough different channels to reach out and to represent young people? But then I'll go back to Yelena. Again, the, the same question, what's the situation? Do you think uh, the research is in a good position? Do you feel that the results are used? Yeah, I would say that it's uh, still a long way to go from the, from the perspective of the youth work practitioner or youth worker. Um, I would say that uh, youth work across Europe is very much needed, but still very much uh, space for improvement is there mainly because it lacks uh, this systematic approach. Um, 
when we speak from from the point of view of, of youth work youth workers can be seen as a sort of double agents from one side they need to shape the programs uh, for young people according to their interests and needs and from the other side uh, they act as a bridge between uh, youth and policy makers in both ways they need to to have uh, information about young people but current information about young people because I think that it's very important also to, to take into con consideration that young people are fluid and very diverse uh, group and uh, uh, in order to follow the trends of young people you have to uh, have continuous access uh, to this kind of data and with that I really uh, support what Miriam and, and Marco said we need continuous research data on young people in order to really make uh, some meaningful uh, changes on a, on a local and national level. And comparing the, when I mentioned already these different levels, I would say that um, from my perspective, on a European level, we do have a um, significant amount of research comparing to local and national level. And I think that that's also a huge problem. We will speak about the challenges later on, but I think that that's also a huge problem that research should be also uh, developed on a, on a local and national level. Thank you, Elena. I see that uh, our panelists are receiving quite a lot of support and positive comments on the chat. Uh, thanks a lot. And also what I'm, I'm taking from Elena and Marco that, you know, on average, maybe situation is good. You know, we have funding, you know, we have different research institutes and so we have quite a lot of research done, but it doesn't mean that it's equally or evenly uh, distributed uh, across different parts of Europe. And some topics maybe are left out, some regions are maybe a little bit left out. And also situation is changing pretty rapidly, so which also does affect the situation. Okay, I'm moving now again to, to Benjamin. Benjamin, do you think that institutions know anything about young people or what they think, what they know, what the European Forum does to know that? Well, I do hope that institutions uh, to some <laughs> extent know what young people are and how to define that group, uh, which is already a um, which was mentioned before by Marco and by Jelena, right? It's, it's already difficult to coin that term, young people, or what, what is youth um, as a very heterogenic uh, group. Um, what do you what do you raise like what do institutions know about young people and, and youth research? Well, we have different kinds of um, impressions there. For example, we have kind of a successful study that the youth forum also conducted and, and cooperated with different other civil society actors. Uh, with was the um, youth progress index that came out in two thousand eighteen, and that one um, was like giving an overview of the social composition um, of like I think more than one hundred fifty states worldwide. Uh, on the situation of youth, um, detached from purely economic questions, but from a human rights perspective and angle. And that one was actually um, received quite well from the institutional side. That is an, that is an example uh, where like, the European Commission took that into consideration, the ECOSOC from the United Nations took that into consideration. So we have, um, that, that is a positive example where we say, okay, we can build on that, we can develop on that, uh, we can continue that, but we should not ignore the structural problems that have been mentioned, especially by Marco during his comment, right? Um, like that there is like sometimes a difficulty of translating the needs of young people and what civil society organizations are putting forward um, towards the institutions. Is it through policy making, is it through advocacy or um, through use uh, research itself and the structural dialogue and this <laughs> and now the EU youth dialogue with its structural problems of communicating the needs into the institutions and what is feasible from the institution side is like one of the big challenges that, that we are facing in general. And then one thing I would like to, to highlight because it was um, mentioned that we have this beneficial situation of funding right now. But if you actually look at the chart that you Mario just presented in the beginning, what is the biggest challenge for youth research? Several people there mentioned funding. And um, that is, if we look at specific regions in Europe, funding is a huge issue, especially if you want to conduct research, if you want to do something in a specific environment where it's not that well received that you're actually doing that on the local uh, level or that you are active as an NGO. I'm just thinking about some of our friends uh, from um, 
from Belarus, for example, um, there it is not that easy to conduct research and to be well received as such. And we are also now at a critical point where our funding is kind of in danger. Uh, we are presented with a new uh, multi-annual financial framework pr proposal, which is not reducing the Erasmus funding as such, uh, but we are seeing that the COVID-19 impact is so massive that uh, the, the demands that were a year ago kind of taken for granted, we will increase Erasmus, we will increase youth mobility, et cetera, et cetera, is now questioned as such. And there's like a tiny increase. If you um, delete inflation rates from that, you don't really know whether funding is actually going to be increased. So that is an issue we need to take into consideration. I think it is going to be um, a pivotal element in the, in the, the future uh, discourse about youth research and how to fund it and how to uh, keep it safeguarded. Thank you, Benjamin, for raising this important point, because we're always looking for ways how to improve the situation. But sometimes we also have to appreciate the situation which we already have, uh, not to take it for granted. And also to prove that you know, what, what we're doing is meaningful and is bringing the change. So on that specific note, I would like to ask you... Marius, to can, yeah, Miriam, please. May, may I uh, sort yeah. of comment a little bit on, uh, on uh, in reality what the others have said and uh, it, I, I mean and also sort of content because in reality I think um, both Elena and Marco and uh, sort of an, uh, something which we have to think about at the European level I, I, I mean and it is true that uh, the funding is making um, it possible for research uh, for, for us to have more research and so on uh, but I still think that uh, and we're still far away on how to how we're organizing this I uh, know, sort of, uh, even though we are doing, a, uh, we have been trying so much and like the ECIP and uh, I mean, like we have the Youth Wiki, which is trying to organize the week, we have ECIP, which is also trying to organize this, but I still think we have to work more on how to organize uh, all the knowledge that, that that there is to be able to use it more, Marco, because you have also said that, I mean, we um, are not really using uh, all the research that, that is, or it is not applied. And that was one, one reason why this is not well used and why it, it is not yet applied. But there's also another reason why, I mean, because in reality, I mean, when a researcher is, or when a group of researchers are, do, are are presenting a research or have been commissioned a research. I mean, we also think that that an action would be taken there and then. And sometimes, uh, I mean, actions cannot be taken from a policy maker's point of view. Actions cannot be taken really there and then. I mean, they would be taken in a, in a few years, in a few months, in a, but uh, I mean, that research would still, I still believe that that research is still in the mind of the policy maker. I mean, sometimes we want the results, we want to see the results, but of course, because of bureaucratic reasons, which sometimes we cannot do, do without either, because if there's no bureaucracy, there's no institution. I mean, you know, so, so in a way, it's, uh, it, it's like a, a, a give and take situation. And, uh, and uh, in reality, we do think that this is not being used, but in reality, it would be, it is being used more than we think. As well, I mean, and a lot of people are. In, sometimes we might not take exactly that research, but it would be a group of uh, M readings that you would have uh, have taken to come up with a policy action. So uh, I think that is something which we have in mind. One thing which I think is still lacking, uh, I mean, from the research point of view, is and the, perhaps it will come with the challenges as well. And I may, might be answering your the next question. Um, Marius, but uh, I mean, research is team based. It sh should be team based, really. But many times we like the we still like that culture. I mean, and uh, perhaps it's because of the funding, or perhaps it's because uh, I mean, we might have small teams, but we still don't have really a very good European team, and that is something which we should really work on. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Miriam, for for your for your reaction. Well, actually, I also have quite many questions coming from, from your first round of answers because one of, one of the things that we mentioned quite often that, you know, systematic approach or systematic way is needed, but what do we really mean by that? What kind of systems do, do we need in place? Uh, another thing, we also some, 
somehow take for granted that knowledge is good and research is providing more knowledge so research is good but we're also seeing some anti-intellectual tendencies where politicians and let's not mention the countries where they refuse to use research data and so on and they are questioning the value of research and and so on so maybe we can share some of the examples how research actually helped either programs or practitioners because also people sometimes on the street big question but yeah research is you know books it's called bookshelves did it really save any life or help anyone do you have any examples how research has supported policy development no may i sure <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there, there are quite some examples, I would say. Um, in case of NAPOR, for example, we had um, developing a mechanism called Passport of Competences, which is the mechanism that is uh, uh, like um, uh, re recognizing the competences uh, gained through youth work programs and uh, especially important when it comes to employability of young people. So for us, the first step was to, to uh, commission the mapping study across Europe to see what are the, the examples to, to build on. And then we also had a national research uh, that, uh, that was meant to, to uh, pinpoint the impact of youth work in acquiring competences that increases uh, employability of young people. Uh, then we had all those data we were then able to uh, set on one table uh, like uh, big companies, uh, policy makers from national level and also youth workers from across Serbia. Uh, and then starting from that point, we developed this uh, mechanism that is now usable and have, you know, uh, it's because it was comprehensive uh, gathering of data, it has influences from all three uh, groups that are needed. Uh, at the moment, I'm quite happy that we are uh, together with two research institutions from Croatia and Serbia. We are working on a, a research about rural youth needs, uh, which will result hopefully in a, a national strategy for, in Serbia at least, for rural youth. So quite some examples where the research was very much needed in what we do. Uh, but as I said, all, all that comes with a lot of uh, challenges and we will come back to that. Mm. Thank you, Yelena. Anyone else? Marco? Well, perhaps just two stories, a success, successful one. One is a very short one. I'm sure that you're all familiar with Ray. And um, from my point of view, I think this is a very good story. You know, the whole idea of, you know, gathering research about Erasmus Plus. And I think that European Commission basically listens to the recommendations that uh, Ray Network actually proposes. And you can see, you know, in the glimpses of this new generation programs that, you know, the bigger emphasis of social inclusion, just as it was proposed, was put into, 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 uh, into practice. So I would say that, I mean, the Ray is definitely something that was needed in the European youth uh, research. Uh, area. Uh, another example is, of course, I'm going to talk from the perspective of Croatia. So, um, I mean, um, the general idea of Croatian youth policy is really, it's tried to be evidence-based. So whatever is being done, basically, it's uh, first what we do is research, and then based on the research, uh, we produce some kind of policy paper. And right now, Croatia is in the process of developing a competent standards for youth workers and also developing um, a, a master program, actually, in, in youth studies and then with a specific track of youth work. And this was done, uh, actually, this is being done uh, in a way that that first the big research was done in conducted in Croatia and Slovenia. And then based on this research, actually, curricula and then later on standards um, are, 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 are developed. So I would say that there are some positive stories, but uh, we need to hear about them more and as someone mm -hmm. said in the uh, Federica I think that she, she, she pointed out in the chat that basically there is a need for coordination and that there is a need to burst this this as she called it European research bubble because you know there are lots of things happening at European level at the national level the local level however we, right now despite the fact that we do have a start of participation and information that we have youth wiki that we have equip that we have partnership as such we still don't have from my point 
point of view, an adequate mechanisms of coordinating, you know, various data for research. This is a problem not only, I mean, this is a problem for academic research also, because, I mean, if you take a look at the horizon where lots of money is being invested in, I mean, lots of stakeholders, not, 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 not only, you know, university professors and researchers, but also, you know, civil society organizations and practitioners, they still don't know about the data that, that, that has been produced, and then later on, consequentially, they're not being used. So from my point of view, I would I like to appeal to anyone who can, you know, just to try to see whether there is any opportunity, you know, just to form some kind of, I don't want to say another platform because we have, you know, proliferation of various platforms, but, you know, some mechanism in, in the absence of better wording, you know, to, to, to see whether the research uh, data that have been produced and you know, lots of money being invested in, in it can be used much more than the, 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 the there is, there are. Yeah. yeah, let's just stop here. Thank you, Marco. I also wanted to uh, reply a bit to, uh, to this comment about youth research, uh, European research bubble. Yeah, there are networks, there are mechanism there are instruments but it doesn't necessarily guarantee that there is a cooperation or willingness to cooperate and share or there is actually time to do that we also have uh, quite many good examples on the local level and i think where that's where you can really make quite quickly the the impact the change for example this uh, well on friday on friday in one of the lithuanian municipalities we are presenting feasibility study on open youth work promotion in the region. So it was nice uh, research done by my colleague Nedis, who is also hanging here with us on the chat. And then we have a document, we have a proof, uh, which comes from institutions, youth workers, from young people, politicians hear that. There is a push from institutions, uh, from communities inside of municipality. There are youth workers and young people present in the meeting to discuss that. So all of a sudden you have all the arguments and enough of the political will and enough of the willingness to push politicians if you want to make the change happen. Again, do we need to make it into an example or case story? Maybe not, because the main aim is actually to, to develop youth work on the local level in a certain municipality. But actually, I really agree that we need to, to share the stories to show that actually research can be an instrument not a name in itself, but an instrument to bring the change which we want to see happening. Guys, what, what are other challenges related to youth knowledge or research in Europe? What, what do you see? What would you like to really point out? Benjamin, please. Yeah, so uh, that give, also gives me the opportunity to uh, reply a little bit to what's been said in, in the uh, previous couple of minutes. There were a couple of very important points. Um, so the research-based the research policy making is also like a key issue that, that we are taking very serious uh, in the youth forum. Like when we are trying to develop our own and internal policies, how to do advocacy towards uh, institutions, we are trying to do it on a research-based um, foundation, let's say. Like this is how we are proposing most of our policy papers internally and um, are trying to uh, direct um, the, the policy angle. That's of course decided by member organizations, but we are also a non partisan platform because we have kinds of different inputs of, of political uh, opinions um, present in, in this platform. So research-based policy making is absolutely important for us to also develop our own approach, how we represent young people in a, in a holistic way. So that's, that's, that's one thing where I think like research is playing a very important role for civil society, um, especially in these larger uh, structures. Um, and then I think, uh, on, on the European level, whether when we're talking about this uh, European research bubble and, and what kind of like different ideas we have where research is needed or where it does, uh, does play a role or it doesn't play a role, that is an ongoing discourse that is very difficult to navigate actually. Because if you look at different kind of regional organizations, regional platforms or, or like very local organizations, they have very different ideas of what should be discussed on the European level and what shouldn't. Uh, what is actually to be dealt with on the regional level or on the local level, on the very local level and what is not to be discussed. So if you look at that, this is an ongoing discourse that we have within our organizations and also on the institutional level, because they're very different national realities. And that is also, um, I think, a big challenge for the European research area to actually identify what are things that can be done and what I think that we need to uh, find a holistic uh, approach and that we can 
actually do. Um, but a very positive example that, that I would like to mention that uh, of research that we also did internally uh, was that we actually monitored um, using an SDG study uh, on the Sustainable Development Goals, the Agenda 2030, to try to identify which SDGs are actually the most relevant ones for youth organizations and where is advocacy mainly focused on so where we need to put a main focus and a direction on so because we, are, we often assume that there is this large uh, um, amount of of, uh, of uh, sdgs and we need to focus kind of on everything but where do we actually put a focus on where can we invest our resources in because it's such a wild a, a wide field so we had to conduct a very thorough research uh, we did it over a year and then we actually identified what are the key needs for uh, civil society and youth organizations um, in order to promote uh, sustainable development goals in a most um, yeah sustainable way so I think that is that is kind of an interesting um, an interesting angle one more thing that is going to be interesting that was just published by us yesterday was a, also a research on shrinking civic space in Europe so I think that is mm -hmm. actually a very very necessary study because uh, that's something that is um, we always assume that it's impacting specific organizations from specific countries, um, but we actually see that that is also in the um, that, that uh, civil space also shrinking in the uh, classic democratic um, Central European states. And the study is quite shocking uh, what it reveals, like how youth organizations and how civil society organizations are uh, questions in their legitimacy and how they are re reduced in its significance and importance. So this is also an example where research shows us in a form of a warning signal, listen, there is like a kind of a danger for youth organizations right now and we need to focus on this, otherwise we will lose a key momentum and a key element of um, democratic societies and structures. So if you have a, have a time, uh, if you have the time to look at our web page, um, it's been shared yesterday, the study, I think it's quite comprehensive and uh, very holistic. Thank you, Benjamin. You can also drop maybe a link in our chat to make sure that we, it's, it's really important what you are mentioning because uh, also we were happy that, you know, NGOs and youth workers are becoming more, kind of, they understand the research process, they, they become researchers on their own, uh, they start using evidence-based or research-based advocacy, so kind of empowerment of the sector. But on the other hand, uh, Benjamin's example showed that actually we're using it to, to protect ourselves because the, the space is shrinking. So, yeah. Any other challenges or things we can do to improve? Marco, please. Um, yeah, I think this was a great introduction actually into one of the things that, uh, from my point of view, is a bit of a challenge um, at our epistemic sphere, and that is the lack or the absence of the clear quality standards in youth research. So um, I'm definitely all for, you know, that various stakeholders do research. However, from my point of view as an academic, I mean that we have to have some clear, you know, guidelines how and what to do in order to, for a research to be a quality research. So this is something that we should definitely work upon. And I'm not sure that there is at this point, you know, any initiative that tries to, you know, to some extent to, 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 to to, to, to develop this kind of stuff. In order to do that, one of the things that I've been, you know, dealing with throughout my career is that the lack of uh, disciplinary identity of a youth researcher or youth studies per se. If you take a look at, for instance, a gender studies or child studies, they're much more um, um, uh, coherent, much better consolidated. I mean, there are some, of course, initiatives that try to link various youth researchers, for instance, European Sociological Association, also European Partnership with PEAR, you know, there are some, some initiative, but still, you know, when you, when I talk to my colleagues, they all say, okay, so I'm a sociologist, but I do youth research among others, some political scientists, but I do youth participation. You know, there are very few of us that, that, that really identify ourselves exclusively as a youth researcher, because I can't say anything else about myself apart from youth research, because I don't know anything else. Uh, so, so yeah, I think that this is, it would be very beneficial, you know, if we could, you know, ch start to develop academic identity and then from this uh, disciplinary or academic identity as a youth researcher, youth studies uh, academic, then later on we would perhaps uh, have this quality standards. 
In addition to this, uh, from my point of view, I would really like to see much bigger, I mean, this is one of the challenges, uh, the, no clear guidance of how to evolve young people in research, because everyone are claiming that they're doing it, the question is how are they doing it, and whether they're really doing it or just consulting them after afterwards, you know, when, once when the research is done. So this is another thing. Also, uh, the semi-last thing is um, the, the, and this strikes me, and this is, right now we're living in, in this um, paradigm of quantitative research research. Everything that has to be uh, quantifiable, you know, if you want, for instance, that your research to be used uh, by the policymaker. Um, this, 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 this too big emphasis of quantitative research, and this is coming from the, I mean, I'm coming from the institute, which is mostly quantitative, so I know what I'm talking about. Um, so I, th I don't think that, that the exclusively um, doing quantitative research is beneficial for the youth sector. I would really try to appeal to a colleagues of mine, you know, to do a quality qualitative research because they, we, then we can get, you know, complementary data with this, uh, this, 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 this data. And the last thing, and I'm going to stop here, is that there are some aspects of youth sector or youth policy per se that are under research or understudied. For instance, I mean, right now, everyone, everyone's talking about youth work. And uh, my, my argument is that we don't have research on youth work. The only research that we have is on youth workers, because it's much easier, easier to get to, to youth workers and not to youth work. So it would be quite interesting to have more than one, and I'm, right now I know about one big horizon project at the European level that deals with youth work, but not necessarily and exclusively on youth work, but it's one of the dimensions that, that is being covered. So all that, I would say that are some of the challenges that we're facing with. Thank you, Marco. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Marcus. Can oh, I, I, was, I mean, in, in reality, sure, yeah, yeah, okay, fine. In reality, Marco has, as, as if he read to me, because I was going to say one of the challenges of having research is there, I, I, I've, I looked, I was going to use the word rigor. I mean, I still think that we don't have enough rigor in, in youth research um, to, be, to, to, to be able to have an established field. I mean, so we really need to work on that rigor. Um, it does not mean that we have to follow the other, uh, I mean, let's, if you look at social work or education and so on, we have to find, follow the same kind of rigor, but have our own style of rigor. And I don't think we have really, we really developed that. I mean, uh, because a lot of the youth, when you're speaking to youth researchers, they all tell you that you were a sociologist, fine. I mean, so, but then sort of that, and Marco said the identity, and I had identity and rigor to really establish um, some um, core um, youth research um, at, at not only at European level, but I mean, at, at a kind of level. And this, in a way, um, would bring about more respect. I mean, more because, uh, I mean, I, I was also going to say that there, one of the challenges is, to, is trust and respect. I mean, policy makers need to trust and respect more um, the researchers. I'm not saying that they don't, but this would sort of definitely um, bring about more trust and more respect to, and, and the challenge between power and agency then, I mean, that tension that between power and agency, instead of having it as something as a tension, but it's like getting really the two, um, um, kind, the two together to work more harmoniously, more har harmoniously for, for the sake of young people. I mean, I think that at a European level, we have also one thing which, I believe has, uh, in a way, as much as, it's, as, it's, as it is good, it has also, uh, I mean, it, it's not, has not really sort of, perhaps this is, is called youth consultation. I mean, which we really sometimes mi mix the consultation process with young people as with research, especially some policymakers do that as well, you know? So, and that, the fact that we don't identify the difference between consulting young people, listening to the voice of young people, and research, which can also be research, but there's no rigor in this consultation yet. 
so and then, and then the voice of young people so i think these are the these are the the concepts that we have to really look into delve into and try and try try to consolidate them yeah, thank you miriam uh, also you know like from my own perspective because you we're talking about more networking, more sharing, more research. But when we tried to put the Lithuanian Youth Researchers Network together four or five years ago, the biggest obstacle was actually researchers themselves. Because they didn't see necessarily the need of uh, cooperation because it doesn't help them academically. Or if it's uh, somehow privately commissioned or state commissioned uh, research, they also didn't see the value actually of engaging and involving others. So that was really, really shocking for me. Uh, so we should also not take it for granted that, you know, everyone wants to, to cooperate because it does take some time. I'm getting also the very positive messages through chat, through Facebook, through other channels saying that it's, you're putting forward very interesting uh, arguments and topics, but also we have to consider the time. Or maybe we need to talk with you for partnership that this uh, webinar should be not one hour long, but maybe two hours or three hours because we have uh, committed people who would like to discuss. I would like to raise uh, the last question and it, it's, it's linked to the previous ones for sure, but what can we do coming from different uh, sectors, from different uh, perspectives to strengthen the role and place of youth research and to make sure that actually it leads to actions, it uh, impacts the decisions and programs. And Yelena, maybe you would like to start because I didn't give you a chance to reflect on uh, challenges yeah thank you so many uh, so many questions brought up and i just want to say that i highly agree with everything that miriam and mark pointed out and especially i mean it's very important to highlight this necessity for um, quality research especially when speaking about youth work and attempts to measure the the impact of youth work to young people so it's really I mean, so many things were said that are really crucial. Um, in answering to your question, what can we do? Um, I will just share an example of what we are thinking to do here in Serbia, because uh, faced with all these challenges that, that were mentioned, we are now get, uh, going into the direction uh, to create a joint body consisted of researchers and youth workers on a national level with a clear research agenda on a yearly basis uh, in uh, like as an attempt to uh, gather uh, meaningful data on, a, uh, on youth interest and needs from Serbia. But also, I mean, this platform or body or whatever we call it is something that we also see uh, uh, as crucial to uh, also have this um, how to say, uh, possibility to translate the, the research data to youth workers, because that's also one of the challenges that even though we have some research data and findings that are really important, youth work, workers uh, doesn't really know how to use it in everyday practice. And that's something that we also have to educate youth workers how to use research data, data for uh, advocating for uh, young people's uh, uh, needs and interest towards policy makers. So, so many, I mean, different levels. And also uh, what is lacking, and we are planning to connect with this platform, is to have open source data on uh, youth. So everything produced as finding to, to uh, have in a form of open so source data so can, uh, people can use it from all over Serbia. So yeah, that's one of the, the things that we are planning and that's something that it's uh, actually now uh, part of uh, number strategy plan for uh, 2022 because that's also one of the things that it's important uh, even though we we are aware how research is important and how research is helping us in formulating our programs and policies uh, until we put it in a strategy as one of the priorities it's quite often lost in, you know, distribution of funds on a yearly level because we also are project based. So and as many local organizations as well, because when you have limited uh, amount of money, uh, I mean, basically you are uh, focusing on providing programs and services, not on a research. So I think we have to find a way to make it a priority for ourselves as well in order to, to make further steps. Yeah. 
Thank you, Elena. Who would like to comment in two, three sentences what can be done to strengthen your research and role of research? Please, Benjamin. If I may, and then um, Thank you. Uh, just just from a uh, from the civil society perspective, um, I think like what, what what needs to be done or what needs to be increased is to to take into consideration that um, youth organisations are applying research. They are not just they're not learning to develop own researchers, but they are often quoting researchers, they're working with it, they're implementing it in, into their advocacy angles, into their strategies. So uh, by giving um, youth organizations and civil society organizations in general the, uh, a seat at the table to, to fully participate in the political discourse and um, to, um, to foster the exchange with the institutions, uh, we are actually granting a way forward that the, uh, that the research is being communicated up that it's not just um, somewhere uh, in within the bubble or without a location. So for for us, uh, a civil society organization, it is um, therefore pivotal and absolutely essential that youth organizations are um, getting a seat at the table on, on every level, that, they, that young people's voices are heard and that therefore they can also translate their needs into concrete policies. And this is also like the the, the big gap in the communication line between research and, and institutions that we need to overcome. Thank you, Benjamin. I hear that uh, youth organizations are ready to team up with researchers and Anytime. push for the changes which are needed. Thank you. Miriam. I mean, in reality, I think I have already said in my, my, my other previous <laughs> intervention. So, uh, so I, uh, therefore, in a way, reiterate uh, the idea of rigor, the idea of having really more of a team culture, and uh, and also in in reality, uh, and also another the idea on sh showing how better the links that um, can exist between research and policy actions and how research really helps out to bring about new new policy actions in to be implemented i mean one other thing which i think is also important is um, to put more appetite in the policy in policy makers uh, and and an understanding on how and a commitment as well on how they can use research um, to come up uh, with new policy actions and programs. Thank you, Miriam. Marco, anything from your side? You're good. Yeah, then I'm passing the floor to our partnership colleagues, Lana and Marta. Thank you, Marius, and thank you to all the panelists for very interesting uh, reflections. I think it has been uh, much more uh, in-depth and in, uh, bringing up some of the issues uh, that, uh, that are really important to, to talk about, so much more than we expected. Um, so thank you very much for that. And I would like to pass on to Marta for uh, a little wrap-up and reflection of what has been said. which is not easy from the point of view of actually seeing the variety of different points that have been made. But uh, I can just share that from our experience over the years of talking about the importance of youth research and again and again and again, they very well reflect what uh, brought us to organizing the Youth Knowledge Forum and this Knowledge Break series. Uh, we realized that it's really an intercultural dialogue between the different stakeholders of the youth field and above. And we know probably everybody from their personal experience that intercultural dialogue is not always easy and that you need to have patience, you need to have time, you need to have space and possibility to communicate with the other. And certainly the will, if this is a win-win situation, this is of course much easier and much better. Um, and we, you have already mentioned several ways in which uh, this can be successful and the needs. The needs, I think, are huge. Um, I think that in the partnership, we have believed for many years and try to walk the walk and not only talk the talk, that it's about mm -hmm. co-creation in, uh, in the processes. Everybody has their specificity. Researchers need the rigor. You said it very clearly. The policymakers are those that have the responsibility to taking the final decision, but aren't those decisions better when they are discussed together with 
those bringing knowledge from the researcher point of view, but also the tacit knowledge that the policymakers have themselves and the youth organizations, young people, that they can also bring the same for the practitioners. So I think that already this first webinar was very promising and I'm looking forward to the next step uh, in this uh, next steps in this series. Um, thank you very much for all your reflections and of course we will go even further in depth. I'm very convinced about that and, um, and thanks a lot for, for sharing your thoughts. That's exactly in the spirit of the co-creation of trying to advance in the critical thinking of how we can do better for the young people in Europe. Uh, thank, you, thank you, Marta. And I'm also going to try to ask Maria to uh, maybe share with us uh, what has been uh, recorded uh, from today's conversations. I know we had uh, some technical issues earlier, uh, but we will see if that is going to be possible now. Uh, and also just to link, link on what Marta has said and what has been uh, what, some of the questions that have been raised today. Oh, here we go. Okay, great. Um, in terms of uh, the continuation of our discussions, uh, there will be exactly these uh, conversations with various sectors, uh, as well as the, the, so basically the conversations with policymakers and how is research used towards policy. Uh, and we will also reflect a little bit on um, policy evaluation and what is the role of research in that in the, in the coming series. We will also be talking with the practitioners uh, and how they have used uh, research in their work and there will also be reflections uh, from on regarding what are the knowledge networks that exist at the European level uh, as well as the reflections from uh, the European institutions uh, and uh, how they uh, commission and use research uh, in their work. Uh, so I would like to then uh, close it uh, with, uh, with the, this graphic recording. I think we have a very nice uh, representation here. Um, very short and summarized in terms of what has been uh, said today. And we will of course uh, share the video then uh, through our YouTube uh, as well as Facebook channel. So thank you again. Uh, and we will be having uh, uh, the continuation of our series in the coming weeks and watch, uh, watch our look at, uh, our, for our social media. Uh, we will be announcing uh, the, the next and upcoming uh, Youth Knowledge Break series. We hope this Knowledge Break session helped you learn more about the role of knowledge in supporting youth policy making and youth work practice in Europe.